Hey folks, thank you for joining us today for morning prayer. Thank you for joining me for this reflection. Today I'm going to be talking about uh, a piece of scripture from the third chapter of the letter, the first letter of John. And what it says is this, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for others. If anyone has material possessions and sees their brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in them? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. Now the scripture today goes on further, but we're going to stop there. See, as I was reading this, we often we see this passage and we see other passages like it that tell us to be charitable, that tell us to give, that tell us, tell us to, to help out our, our brothers and sisters, to help out our community, to help out our neighbors. And we see that as something that Jesus tells us to do. And we can see that work, we can see that, that ministry as sort of a litmus test about the strength of our faith. Okay? Those who, who give a lot, they, they, they believe a lot, right? Because it's, yes, we believe that Jesus Christ is the, is the Son of God, and that's wonderful, and that, that is enough in that that one pattern of belief helps us to move forward, and that, that one aspect of our belief that pushes us and, and guides us into how we should live this life. But what John's saying here is not only an indicator of the depth of our faith. Where we are today anyway, it's also an indicator as to what it is we actually believe, who it is we actually believe in. For John, we know what love is because Jesus gave himself for us, died on the cross for us, was crucified, died, buried for us. Likewise, we are called to give ourselves to others. John goes on to say that anybody who has all of their needs met, their material needs met and have extra, they are, and they, and they see their, their brother or their sister, they see their, their community in need, someone in their community in need, and they do not help out, then how could the love of God be in them? It's impossible, John says, that if you can see people in need around you and you are not willing to share the extra that you have with them, not just some of it, the extra. If, you're, if you have your needs met and you're not willing to give of your extra means, how could you possibly claim that you have the love of God in you? And this is where that second aspect of the litmus test, when all of our needs are met and we're not willing to give up the extra, we must ask ourselves, what is it that I believe in? The life of a person who believes in Jesus Christ as the gospels teach us about Jesus Christ, that is a life of sacrifice. Right? That person lives a life of sacrifice. That person lives a life where needs are met and everything else is a life of sacrifice. It, it goes out into the, into the world. So when we live a life that isn't of sacrifice, who is it that we actually believe in? Who is that Jesus that we claim to believe in? Because it's not, John says, the Jesus of the Gospels. The Jesus that claims God helps those who help themselves, that Jesus never existed. The Jesus that claims we should be armed uh, to the teeth and that we should be willing to shoot our neighbor and that we should be willing to take a life, that Jesus never existed. The Jesus that, that, that claims that every person should pick themselves up by their own bootstraps, that Jesus never existed. 
the Jesus that calls us to take care of ourselves first and foremost, the Jesus that calls us to take care of people like us, the Jesus that calls us to, to side with the oppressor as opposed to siding with the oppressed, the Jesus that tells us to side with the strong as opposed to siding with the vulnerable, that Jesus never existed in the Gospels. The Jesus of the Gospels tells us to side with the weak, the sick, the dying, with the vulnerable. The Jesus of the gospel tells us to give of ourselves as he gave of himself. The Jesus of the gospel tells us to stand beside those who are struggling against inequality and injustice. I love this example from John. Because what it offers us is, is an indicator, not only of the depth of our faith, the depth of our trust, the depth of our love. It's an indicator that describes what it is we have faith in. What it is we believe in, who it is we believe in. It's great that we believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. But which version? The one who tells us to look after ourselves? Or the one who calls us to be willing to give of ourselves for the betterment of the people around us? Only one of those two people, only one of those two Jesuses actually existed. Only one of them are worth following. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face be made to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted up to you. May you always know the peace of being in the Lord's presence. And I pray that you and I are on the right track, that we are following the right Jesus, that we are committed to the real Jesus, the one who calls us to give of ourselves without condition, the one who calls us to give of ourselves to anyone who has need, the one who calls us to sacrifice for the people around us. Amen.